another episode of A Visit with That Person of High Strangeness. My name is Timo, and with us today visiting is Slavka and Henrietta the Cat. Slavka recently watched our previous episodes on human potential, and she had a few questions to ask. Thank you for having me and my cat. <laughs> we have been uh, very intrigued by the topics that you introduced, and um, I, I know that I'm not a scientist, and I just do not know enough to really understand some of the details that you mentioned. And I would like to mostly know what I can do to become a better person, how I, as an ordinary person, can use the information that you presented to make my life better and to become a better human being. Sure. Um, well, one doesn't have to be a scientist to become a better person, of course. <laughs> and the techniques to evolve consciously are actually fairly simple. Mm. Um, the first step, of course, is you have to accept full and complete responsibility for yourself, your life, the choices that you make. Because as long as we give our power to something else out there, whether it's circumstances, family members, our childhood, our job, the government, then we're giving our power away and we're not in control of our own lives. Whereas once we take that step to say, okay, maybe not everything is my fault, but I'm in charge. I can choose how I respond to things. I can choose, choose how to manage my emotions. I can choose the path that I take through life. I don't have to be a victim of circumstances. I don't have to be a victim of my childhood. That's a very powerful first step and it's essential because without taking that first step, then you're like most people, you just go from day to day kind of reacting to life instead of being proactive and making your own way through life and making your own choices and plotting your course. Um, the second step is to clearly define who you are here and now, the present. Um, it's important that you're completely honest with yourself because as long as you hide from parts of yourself, then those parts will still have power. They still will exist and they'll still exert an influence. So it's important that you kind of do a self-assessment and also maybe get the opinion of some other people too. Ask mm -hmm. them what kind of person they're like, you know, mm -hmm. and define, describe that person, write it down. Um, that becomes your starting point, your departure point to become the person you really want to be. Mm -hmm. So then the next step is to Write your own specifications for who you want to be. <laughs> Define yourself, the new you. Um, and not it's not about traveling or how much money you have or where you live. It's about you as a person, as an individual. It's about your characteristics. It's about how you respond to things, how you feel about things, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about others. It's about you. And once you've done those first three steps, that then enables you to program your subconscious to become the person you want to be. And in the third step, it's important to describe the perfect you, you know, aim high, be ambitious. Um, this, your mind is capable of amazing, wonderful things and the universe will help you get there if that's your goal. But if your goal is to just do something simple um, or make some little simple change, you can do that, but you can do a whole lot more. After that, then it's time for step four, which is starting to unload all of the things you don't need. All of the self-doubt, the negative programming, all of the old emotions, and basically it's learning to manage your thoughts and your emotions. And there are some very effective tools to do that, and I think you know about one of them called EFT. I sure do. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about your experience with EFT and basically what it is and how it works. Well, I was lucky enough that um, at my work I was given the opportunity to participate in an EFT program that was available for all employees. And we could choose any type of issue or problem that we wanted to work on, whether it was work related or some physical ailment, family issue. 
And at the time I was actually studying for an exam and I was very afraid of it. So that was um, the topic that I wanted to work on. And with um, the help of EFT, I was able to master that fear and actually um, I had a blast on the exam. So it was great. And I discovered a wonderful tool for self-help. What kind of grade did you get on the exam? <laughs> I was actually the best. Really? <laughs> yes. The highest score? I had the highest score. Wow. And I finished an hour earlier. <laughs> really? So EFT can help a person study. So what is EFT exactly? Well, EFT stands for um, Emotional Freedom Technique. Basically, you are given a tool to free yourself, liberate yourself from whatever it is that's holding you down or, or back. And that's all it is. We create these barriers for ourselves. For example, we don't believe that we can't do something mm -hmm. or some kind of trauma happened to us and we think that because of that, we can never do what it is that we secretly long to do. Right. So you give yourself permission to move on mm -hmm. and you shed the burden. And, and what is it? how does it work exactly? Well. Um, there are some points on the body that you tap and you can tap with two fingers. So we start with the karate chop mm -hmm. and you just start tapping and talking. And the next uh, step from the karate chop would be on your face here in the corner of the eye. Mm -hmm. You keep lightly tapping there and talking. Then you tap in here inside the, the eye area. Then another, um, another spot is between the nose and the lip, so right here. Mm -hmm. And then between the lip and the chin, right here. Then you can tap on the collarbones as well. You make your hand into a fist and you kind of do this. You your chest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I was also told that another good spot is right here under mm -hmm. the arm. So you tap here. And if you're sitting somewhere, for example, um, in a room of people and you feel like you need a little bit of EFT to move on, then you can um, use a spot on your finger or you can tap your wrist. Nobody will notice that you're doing it. Okay, so if you don't want people to think that you're not or something, <laughs> you can kind of EFT discreetly. Well, yes. For example, um, Myself and the EFT practitioner that was helping me in um, in preparation for my exam, we developed a little phrase that I was to use if I was scared during the exam. Um, and that was, I know what I know, because I was worried that I didn't know enough of the subject <laughs> that I was okay. going to write the exam on. So um, I was tapping myself from time to time at the exam, murmuring to myself, I know what I know, everything is okay. And it was such a relief. Yeah. Yes. So can you kind of demonstrate how a typical EFT session would go? Sure. So you would generally pick a problem that you have or you want to talk about. So for example, um, you have a headache and it just doesn't go away. So you can tap yourself on the headache and you can start with the karate chop. Um, I have a splitting headache. I don't know what to do about it. It's just driving me nuts. And it's okay to have a headache. I don't know where it's coming from, but I have it and I have to deal with it. And it's driving me nuts. <laughs> then you proceed to your face. This headache is just too much and I want it to go away. But I can't make it go away, so maybe I could make friends with it. I love my body, even though it's giving me a splitting headache, but I have to live in it and I just have to move on somehow. And then you keep tapping like that, talking mm -hmm. about your headache and different things may start to come up. Uh, for example, oh, I should drink more water or <laughs> I'm dehydrated. Why am I punishing my body by not drinking enough? And mm -hmm. all these things just start coming up from childhood and the past and Okay, so it kind of helps un entangle mm -hmm. all of the various events and issues that might be associated with 
Yes. The headache. Just like in quantum touch, when they say mm -hmm. follow the pain, mm -hmm. they I don't you tell a quantum touch healer, I have a pain in my knees. And then he discovers, oh, it's actually in your, in your spine. Mm -hmm. That's where the source is. So it's like that with EFT. You mm -hmm. often come to a completely different source <laughs> than what you thought you were having problem with. And it's very important to also um, tell yourself at the end of the EFT session or throughout it that you love yourself and you accept yourself. And shouldn't you also state what you want instead of just what it is that you don't like? Um, for example, if you have a goal that you're trying to mm -hmm. achieve, yes, you can certainly approach it from different angles. And that happens quite often. You think that you got something figured out and then next day you, it comes up again. So mm -hmm. you have to tap on it and you will start talking about it in a different way. Mm -hmm. But it's important to just talk without an inhibition. Don't be embarrassed by what you say or what you hear. If you cry, that's okay. Yeah, well, sometimes crying is good. Yes, it is. And um, make friends with yourself. Give yourself permission to um, feel the way you feel. Some people don't think that they are allowed to feel the way they feel. They suppress it because it's the kind of emotion is not approved of in the society, right? Let's say anger or right. something like that. Yeah, and anger can be a very, even though we consider it to be a negative emotion, mm -hmm. um, the purpose is positive in that it, it, the purpose of anger is to stimulate us to create positive change. Mm -hmm. So anger is important, but it poisons us, of course, if we suppress it, if we swallow the anger and we don't allow ourselves to, to feel it and don't give it space to exist and we don't act on it. Um, it doesn't mean that you need to go up and punch someone or, you know, blow something up, but it means that you should express how you feel in some way, somehow. Maybe you should write a letter. Maybe you should just tell somebody how you feel and say, look, what you're doing makes me feel angry. I don't want to be angry. What do you suggest I do about it? <laughs> well, um, an EFT is a great way mm -hmm. to address it, to mm -hmm. address the issue, and let your own subconscious and your body tell you what other things are connected with, right. with that issue. Yeah. So you can have a little discussion with yourself, and it mm -hmm. can be as long as you want. And sometimes there's, we might be angry about something like, let's say the BP Gulf oil spill. Mm. What do we do? You know, we can't necessarily travel to the Gulf Coast and clean it up or make them do the right thing. But maybe we could drive less. Maybe mm -hmm. we can... Buy an electric car. Yeah. Consume less oil. Um, Certainly. Buy less things made out of plastic. Um, eat lower on the food chain. So. Well, oftentimes a crisis happens because it, something has reached a tipping point. It mm -hmm. can't go on much longer like that. And then things get noticed. Right. So we're, we're quite tolerant to things building up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then boom, something goes wrong, and you have to find a solution. Right. So it's important, I think, that we don't just hide from emotions or try to avoid them, but honor them and respect them and allow them to fulfill the purpose that they have. Yes. Now, um, those tapping points, aren't those um, acupuncture meridians also? I, th I think so. I, um, I actually have a little picture of human body and the different points where people can mm -hmm. tap and I believe that I, I saw them somewhere else before. Oh, <laughs> I okay. used to go to an acupuncturist. Right. Now you mentioned quantum touch. I understand mm -hmm. that you took a quantum touch workshop, but you were previously a big quantum touch skeptic. <laughs> well, I was a skeptic, that's mm -hmm. true, but I, uh, I do not mind being persuaded once I see that something works, mm -hmm. once I see the evidence. With quantum touch, it's a little tricky because it's invisible, right? You have to rely on the, what the other person tells you, the, the patient, mm -hmm. <laughs> whether what you did was effective or not. But yes, I w took a beginner's workshop in Nova Scotia, and um, it was quite an eye-opening event, and I experienced some personal changes at the workshop that... I had not expected, and I was quite pleased that um, the workshop went mm -hmm. the way it went. And do you continue to use Quantum Touch? Um, I use it in 
somewhat modified form, I guess. I don't always mm -hmm. follow the protocol or the mm -hmm. prescribed method, but um, I like it and I use it on family members when the need mm -hmm. arises. <laughs> what about yourself? Yeah, I also have um, studied quantum touch. I read the book. I took one of the workshops and I use it on a regular basis. Okay. And I find it's very easy to use. Um, you just breathe in white light energy. You collect it in the top of your head. So you, and then you balloon the energy up in the top of your head. And then you can also go above the top of your head with quantum touch this basically do the top of your head. Mm -hmm. um, when you start getting above your head, then you start running into some chakra points and it gets a little more complicated, but you breathe the energy in and then you push it out down your neck, through your shoulders, out your arm and through your fingers. Um, you can also run it through your palm, but basically you just push the energy out through your hands and you apply it to whatever <clears throat> hurts. And then as you said, Sometimes you need to chase the pain. Sometimes yes. the pain in the leg is actually caused by something in the back. And then quantum touch can also be used to a certain extent on emotions as well. Mm. And sometimes a person will have um, an emotional cause for a physical pain. Um, and quantum touch can help alleviate that sometimes. Although EFT, I think, is probably 